Okay, here I'm going to do another uh, example that you would see in physics where we have a system in equilibrium. So what we have here is we have a system of three weights, one, two, three. And those, uh, the, the bottom, the first weight is connected by a string to some knot. And then on that knot, we have two cords, again, connected to weight two and weight three. And these go around some frictionless pulleys. Okay, so the pulleys are frictionless and the system hangs in equilibrium. If we know that the third weight is a 200 newton weight, we want to find what are the values of W1 and W2. So what I'm going to do is first off just make one of these free body diagrams. Okay, so I'm going to label this as T1. We have T2, the tension, and then T3, our other tension. Uh, one observation, uh, the first observation I want to make is since the friction, we, the, since the pulleys are frictionless, we can simply say that the tension T2 is going to be the weight of that second object. Uh, the tension in our third cord, or the third string, that's just going to be the weight of the third object, which we were told was 200 newtons, so we can use that for free. And then T1, the tension in our first string here, is just going to be the weight of the, uh, the first weight. So we'll make use of that. Now what I'm going to do again is just resolve things into horizontal and vertical components. So let me do the, uh, the sort of the, the, the triangle that corresponds to T2 first. Since our angle here was 55 degrees, we can conclude that this angle is also 55 degrees. So let's suppose we want to find the vertical component first. In that case, notice we would actually have to use cosine. So cosine of 55 degrees, that would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which has value T2. So we can multiply and get that the adjacent side is T2 times cosine of 55 degrees. And recall from our the other example I did, the vertical component involved sine, but that was just simply because the angle was measured in a different place. So just be careful about that. Don't automatically, you know, don't just automatically assume that it's sine or cosine. You have to certainly take into account where the angle is measured from. Likewise, the horizontal component, for the horizontal component, that would have value T2 times sine of 55 degrees. And then we can do the same thing for our, for our other triangle again. So this, uh, the angle was 30 degrees. So we can conclude that this angle will be 30 degrees. Likewise, the vertical component will be T2, excuse me, T3 this time. We're using T3. That'll be T3 times cosine of 30 degrees. And then our our uh, horizontal component is just going to be T3 times sine of 30 degrees. Make sure I get all my sines and cosines and T2s and everything uh, uh, correct there. So now what I'm going to do is just like in the last example, we can use the fact that if we sum up the the forces acting on it on our system uh, horizontally, that's going to equal zero. Likewise, if we sum up the, uh, the vertical forces, those will also equal zero. So we're going to get just a couple, um, a couple equations from this. So let's see here. So if we look at uh, the, the horizontal forces, in that case, we would get that T3 times sine of 30 degrees minus, let's see, T2 times sine of 55 degrees, that's going to have to equal 0. And let's go ahead and use the fact, right? We haven't used that we know the value of T3. That's 200 newtons. So let's definitely go ahead and substitute that in. So we would have 200 times sine of 30 degrees minus T2 times sine of 55 degrees equals 0. So that's going to be one equation. And this is great because now we can simply use that to solve for T2. And if we set up our other equation, if we look at the, uh, the vertical forces, well, in this case, we could take T2 times cosine of 55 degrees 
plus we would have to add the other uh, vertical component. They're acting in the same direction. So we would have T3 times cosine of 30 degrees. I'm going to run out of room here. But then we would have to subtract away the, uh, the weight or the tension T1. So that will equal 0. And now we've got everything we need to, to set up or to solve our problem. Again, we could substitute in the fact that T3 is 200. I'll do that in just a second. Alrighty, so from our first equation here that we came up with, I'm, I can add to both sides. So I'll have T2 times sine of 55 degrees. That's going to equal 200 times sine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and just simplify everything down. Um, so we've seen, let's see, so sine of 30 degrees, that's just pi over 6. Um, sine of pi over 6 is just going to be going to be 1 half. So if we take, well, let me go ahead and write it out. So we have 200 times 1 half. And again, I'm being a little sloppy. I should probably keep my units in there. We're using newtons. I'll put those back in here at the end. So 1 half of 200, well, that's just 100. And then we can divide both sides by sine of 55 degrees, so that's going to be our units in newtons. That's going to be the value of T2, again, which we said is the weight of the second object. So let's see, sine of 55 degrees, sine of 55 degrees, I'm going to round that. I'm getting 0 0.819 when I round to three decimal places. So let's see, 100 divided by 0 0.8. 1, 9. I'm getting that to be 122.100 newtons. So that's going to be the tension in our second rope or cord, again, which is going to be the weight of the, of the second object. And now we can just go back and use our other equation, substituting in, we now know what T2, we now know what T2 is, <clears throat> and we can also plug in the fact that we know what T3 is. So, not too bad here at all. So we had T2 times cosine of 55 degrees, so we'll have 122.100 times cosine of 55 degrees plus T3, again, which is the weight, so that was 200 newtons, times cosine of 30 degrees minus T1, that'll equal 0, so we can add T1 to both sides. So let me do that. And now, again, it's just a matter of simplifying things down a little bit here. So cosine of 55 degrees. So cosine of 55 degrees after rounding, I'm getting 0 0.574 plus 200 times cosine of 30 degrees. So again, I'm going to turn this into a decimal. Cosine of 30 degrees is 0 0.866. That's going to be the weight of the first object. So again, let's just simplify a little further. So 122.100. We'll multiply that by 0 0.574. I'm getting that to be 70.085 after rounding. And then we have 200 multiplied by 0 0.866. So that's going to be 173.2. So if we add those together, 70.085 and 173.2, I'm getting here 243.285 newtons. That's going to be the weight of the, the first weight. So, okay, that's all there is to it. So this is very similar to, it's almost exactly the same as the first problem. The only thing that's different now is, uh, well, we have, you know, in my first example, we had just a horizontal uh, a horizontal cord. So in that case, uh, it obviously had no vertical component. And in a sense, well, in this problem, you know, the pulleys actually don't really make much of a difference simply because they're frictionless. So it was the exact same idea as in the first example. You're just breaking things down into vertical components, or excuse me, horizontal components, vertical components, and then just using the fact that if we sum up those vectors, we get zero.